All right, okay. here we are. So good morning, Julia. This is uh, Mohamed Estati. I'm an assistant professor of digital pedagogies and technology literacies at the Faculty of Education. And uh, I'm going to uh, brief you on my project, Empowering Teacher Candidates in a Digital World, uh, Revising Brock's uh, Educational Technology Courses and Exploring Their Impact. So um, I'm going to start with uh, with the context and the rationale behind, uh, behind the project. And one of the uh, most important uh, factors for initiating this was the technological advancements that we are, uh, we are witnessing. And uh, the most recent and famous one is uh, the generative, generative AI uh, tools, um, which means we need to prepare our teacher candidates for a future classroom that incorporates uh, these tools and the classroom in which students, their students are using these tools. Um, the second, uh, the second reason uh, is, and this is a major one, is uh, the lessons that we learned from the emergency remote teaching during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, one of the main uh, challenges that uh, we noticed among teachers in the classroom, K-12 teachers especially, is the lack of professional development using digital technologies. So they, uh, they voiced their concerns uh, regarding having a lack of preparation to a certain extent and uh, their need for more digital resources uh, to use in their classrooms and the, the need for them to develop their skills in terms of content creation, in terms of using uh, equity, diversity and inclusion practices in an online environment especially and uh, skills and instructional design, online teaching, using learning management systems, etc. So all of those were, uh, were needs and challenges reported by teachers uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So all in all, there is, there is a need to keep on promoting uh, our, the readiness of our educators in the field of educational technology. And this, one, this was the main reason for, uh, for doing the project. So uh, as, as the title indicates, uh, we are revising our uh, teacher education program, digital technology courses. And along that, uh, we are trying to explore the impact of these revised courses, which leads me to discuss the objectives of the project. The first main objective is reviewing and redeveloping the offered digital technology courses in the teacher education program in the Faculty of Education at Brock. And uh, we are talking here about two courses, one for the primary junior intermediate division, uh, and another one for the intermediate senior division. So these courses are uh, are catered towards uh, our teacher candidates who are our future teachers. And the second main objective behind the project is uh, exploring the impact of the revised courses on teacher candidates digital competencies. So in order to highlight the idea of evidence based practices, um, we are uh, I'm trying to explore the, the efficacy of those projects and explore the impact of these uh, of these uh, of these revisions to the courses that are uh, that are being implemented. Now, uh, the timeline of the project is is three years, uh, and this these are the three years of the funding. But uh, the project will definitely continue beyond that. Um, the first uh, the first phase, which already started, uh, it started uh, last year when I started revising those courses and uh, this uh, was ongoing until August 2023 uh, and by reviving by revising the courses this included uh, soliciting feedback from the teacher candidates who took the previous iterations of the course so this was done through surveys uh, circulated with teacher candidates uh, in year one and year two uh, getting their feedback what are their needs uh, so it was a sort of a need assessment for those uh, for those teacher candidates. Uh, what do they need? What do they wish to see in uh, in the course? And uh, at the same time, I also solicited feedback from uh, other team leads, and those are uh, the instructors and the team leads in our faculty uh, who are responsible for other specialty courses like literacy, like mathematics, like science. Uh, because when we talk about educational technology tools, it has to be contextualized without within within these uh, within these uh, uh, other specialty areas. Uh, so I cannot 
work on certain skills or content without looking at what they are doing in their uh, in their courses. So I did uh, some curriculum mapping in order to cover whatever is not being covered in those in those courses and highlight certain aspects that need to be uh, scaffolded for our teacher candidates. So uh, this was uh, this was the initial phase and uh, throughout the summer I collaborated with the team of uh, the instructors on revising the courses and we started teaching the revised courses in September 23, uh, which was uh, the beginning of this academic year. So the first, uh, the second phase in the project is conducting the research with the first cohort of teacher candidates. And this is from September 23 till June 24, which is the end of this academic year. Now, uh, based on, uh, I will elaborate uh, later on the methodology of the research. So I will, I will explain what I mean by conducting the research. But based on the feedback that we will receive from the first cohort of teacher candidates on the revised courses, uh, I'm going to uh, engage in another round of revision for for these for these courses, which I expect to be a bit um, a kind of less extensive than the initial than the initial phase because most of the changes have been have been done, but definitely more feedback from teacher candidates and personal reflections on how the course uh, went throughout this year will give us a lot of uh, highlights. So another round of revision uh, will take place during the summer of 2024. We will conduct the research study again with the teacher candidates, uh, with a second cohort of teacher candidates in September 24 till June 25. And as we did in, uh, in phase three, we are going, I'm going also to revise the courses again for a third round in the summer of 25. And we will conduct the research uh, study again with a third cohort of teacher candidates in phase six, which is going to be September 25 till June 26. Now, although I'm saying here uh, the second round, uh, the second cohort of teacher candidates and the third cohort of teacher candidates are involved in the uh, in the other phases, it's important to note that uh, my work with the first cohort of teacher candidates will not actually stop uh, in June 2024 because this is a longitudinal study. So what I what I'll be doing is uh, and for those who don't know, the teacher education program is a two year program and our courses are offered to teacher candidates in the first year of the teacher education program. So what I will do is I will be connecting with those teacher candidates also in the second year, uh, which will be the first year for the second cohort. Uh, and I'll be uh, involving them in a longitudinal study where I will explore how their views, attitudes and skills in educational technology uh, changed throughout uh, throughout the two year program, especially after they visited the schools because they do their practicum at schools. So I want to I want to see how all of these factors affect uh, their perceptions and their use of uh, educational uh, technologies. So uh, these are in general the phases uh, throughout three years of the project. And finally, uh, this is briefly the methodology of the project. So I'm adopting a mixed method uh, design and involving teacher candidates and the instructors of the courses. And uh, with, with respect to teacher candidates, this includes uh, a pre and post course surveys. So to, to explore the impact of the course specifically, a, a, pre, a pre survey at the beginning of the course, a post survey at the end of the course. And as I said, there's a post program survey. So after they finish two years of the program, I will reconnect with the teacher candidates to to see their views, attitudes and uh, technological and pedagogical skills. And at the same time, uh, we are going to evaluate and analyze their coursework. So uh, teacher candidates are doing amazing, amazing work, such as in their e-portfolios. Uh, they, they are creating online modules, they are curating and creating digital resources. So part of the part of the uh, research study is to analyze their coursework to see uh, what areas uh, they are uh, doing well and what areas uh, they are requesting uh, more help and what areas need improvement. So this will shed light on future areas of research as well. Uh, and finally, the other aspect of the research is and the other data source is the instructors interviews. So this will also help uh, explore uh, the impact of the course from another perspective and the other perspective is very crucial. Those are the instructors who also were engaged in the course design and those are the instructors who are teaching the course. 
So uh, we are, I'm going to conduct interviews with those instructors to see uh, what their experiences have been in, this, in collaborating on designing the courses and implementing the courses, what they think needs to be changed, to be, uh, to be kept, and so on. So this is in general, the, these are the instruments that will be used as data sources in, in this research. That's great. It looks like a really interesting program. You mentioned the e portfolios. Are those public for for people to see? So, uh, so we are using Google Sites now uh, okay. as as uh, as a platform. This may change, but for now, because Google Sites is uh, are public, uh, uh, one one of the one of the reasons for using Google Sites is those teacher candidates are are putting a lot of work on their uh, on their e portfolios and mm -hmm. we want them to sh to showcase their work to future employers yeah so uh, uh google sites was was the option so they, they are public some of the teacher candidates consented to uh providing us uh with the links to uh to use their e portfolios for analysis and the research so we will definitely include include their work uh, anonymously in the uh in the research and uh, I will be in touch with some of them. Uh, maybe they can also present uh, yeah, that about, would be great. About, about their work as well, because it's a powerful assessment and learning and learning tool that uh, that we are adopting now, and it will be used in other courses as well. So we are trying to, we are, they are creating the e-portfolios in our course, but we are encouraging other instructors in the program to yeah. make use of the e-portfolios in their courses. This way, the e-portfolios will showcase the teacher candidates' work throughout uh, throughout that two-year program that's so, a great way to uh, do e-portfolios yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great um i i guess i had a quick question about um your experiences so far in the classroom and how you're finding the acceptance to the, the changes so far maybe mm. we don't you don't have to you yeah, know without, no, without giving uh, away too much <laughs> yeah um so i i have two uh key takeaways so far uh I'm I'm kind of impressed with the initial levels of technology acceptance that our teacher candidates are having, and this this has changed compared to a previous previous years. Not at Brock, uh, I joined Brock last year, but uh, the the reported uh, challenges in the literature on technology acceptance. Uh, those are teacher candidates who have uh, been learning online, who have learned online during the pandemic, most probably. And they have been using technology more than other uh, than other cohorts of teacher candidates. So their their acceptance of technology is uh, is higher, and their technological competence is higher. Now, but the literature also says that technology proficiency in daily life is different from technology pro proficiency in pedagogical practices. So even if you use your phone mm -hmm. on a daily basis, or if you use your tablets or devices on a daily basis for all kinds of things, including social media. This does not uh, make you a proficient technology user in the classroom. Uh, so that this 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 is one one of the uh, main findings. So the attitudes are uh, are positive initially. Uh, so that, that that's a great. So we are starting with a with an advantage uh, in that in that sense because when you have more positive attitude toward using technology, it will directly reflect on your on your practices. Uh, with respect to the feedback on the courses, because we we have finished the first course for the PJI students, the primary, junior, intermediate division, and now we are currently offering the course for the IS students, uh, and the feedback is overwhelmingly uh, positive. They are really enjoying the the new content. Uh, they uh, they are really enjoying the e-portfolios uh, specifically. They 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 believe in its impact on in terms of their uh, their future career. And they are curating and creating too many good digital resources for their personal use in the in the future classroom. So, uh, because the data is still being collected, uh, this is maybe the <laughs> the maximum I can say. But we do because we do uh, weekly reflections, and the weekly reflections are uh, are indicative of these uh, very very positive attitudes. Thanks for the sneak peek. We look forward <laughs> to hearing more um, as the project unfolds. Thank you.